This time on Robert Prospecting. So I'm trying to see how deep this layer is and the shovel's still going down. <laughs> What's up guys, my name is Chris from Vogus Prospect and if you're new to the channel, a big warm welcome and if you're an old moldy hat like this one, welcome back. Today I've got the whole crew out on this gravel bar because it is the richest gravel bar I have worked in the last four years. This is what a one shovel test pan looks like from this spot. That is insanely good. One of these pans can take about two and a half shovels. So we brought out a special system to work it. Let me show you that. We have dubbed this the Mick Matting System. After its inventor, Mr. Mick, the leprechaun. Mick took a video I did earlier, which I'll link up here on YouTube, where I simply shovel gravel out of the pay zone and into fast water. And at the end of the day, I yabby pumped up where I was throwing the gravel and I got really good, decent results. But everyone said, why don't you put some rubber matting in there? And I'm just literally throwing gravel onto this section here and when I fill it up I push the rocks down the sluice the overburden and a little bit of gold will get caught in that but most of our gold should be in there at the end of today. So let's get this big matting system working. You'd think there'd be a gap but <laughs> it's just not. Ah. So when I put my shovel in to push the gravel off, I'm not actually scraping the mat with the tip of the shovel, I'm just putting it in maybe an inch or so on top of the dirt that's in there and pushing the overburden down. That helps stratify everything and it's really only getting rid of the light stuff. I want to leave everything heavy that's on the bottom of the mat in place. The leprechaun's already on it. <laughs> The thing about this system is you don't even need the sluice at the front. All you'd have to do is be a little bit more careful about how you remove that overburden. So you can get sluicing literally for like 15 bucks worth of matting and it works really, really well. I mean, I'm gonna prove that at the end of the day when you see the gold, but for now, just know it works really well. I've seen my first pieces of leprechaun candy. Check it out. Oh yeah boy, we know there's going to be more in this mat too. Dietary fibre. <laughs> So the soil changed consistencies as I got deeper. I just wanted to take a test pan to see what kind of gold was hanging around out on this soil change. And by the looks of it, some okay freaking bits. Yeah, we didn't get as many as the top pan, but we got some nicer sized flakes and a heap of micro stuff. So this layer is going to be interesting to explore. So, I've discovered that the deeper you go, the smaller the bits get. So we're gonna stick to the top two layers. Hopefully there will be candy there. Oh, big rocks. Ah, oh, come on, 
my god, yeah. It's time to be some ruby gold on the front of that mat. The thing about this setup right now is that it's not actually perfect. Realistically, I need to be in the fast water like over there, except it doesn't quite work because it's too deep and on an angle. When you got this manning system in the fast water with the front edge turned up, basically it creates a trough and all of your lights blow off and it self stratifies. I'm having to manually stratify and remove the big rocks at the moment, which is a little bit slower, but still, how easy is this? Is there any rainbow treasure? A couple of toys. <laughs> Tiny rainbow treasure. The rest of it must be on your V-Manning. Uh, it's in the snuffer bottle. Ah, oh, well, that's okay. <laughs> this is the stuff that was in the mats that I don't reckon are working properly. I'm giving my lower back a rest and having a look in the sluice and I have seen some okay pieces in these top cells. So we've got a couple of little bits in the letters here, but if you watch these two cells here, you'll see flashes of gold. They look like decent sized bits. And all of that is our super concentrate. Senor Gadzi is struggling with his um, <laughs> one hole sluice. He had to, I don't know what. <laughs> oh man, the story of this sluice. Just that thing. If it gives you any gold, it's done well. <laughs> <laughs> Found it. Found the hole. It's a bushfire layer. You can tell because usually it's a lot of silt and clay filled with charcoal. And we're just going to take a test pan of it. So this is the stuff. It's a little bit sporadic with the ash, but basically what you end up seeing is this really fine grained sand, charcoal, charred rocks, all embedded in what is basically a weird sort of stretchy clay. The reason bushfire layers are so rich is because when the fire goes through it removes all the root systems there's nothing holding the soil left and you get a lot of erosion so you usually end up with a decent amount of gold So we'll soon know if this bushfire layer is holding any gold. We really hope it is. See a little bit in the corner. Yeah, that's not a bad test pan. Look at that. There'd be 20 good specs in there. All those people giving kids who played in the mud a hard time. <laughs> Who's laughing now? All out of clay. I've run about 50, 60 shovels worth of dirt and now we're going to clean out. I just pushed the vast majority of the dirt down through the sluice so we're going to see a good clean out in the sluice but I want to see what's hiding on the matting. We've got gold in the lettering, we've got gold in pretty much all the cells up the top and we've got a lot of ironstone. So I think this might be a real tasty looking cleanup. This is going to be pretty good. This is going, this is going to be pretty good for a 60 shovel run. <laughs> Stupid yellow rocks. Oh, the anticipation at this point. Look at it all coming out through that gravel. Yeah, that's, that's a respectable little take. That's just out of the river sluice.
vast majority of that. That's good. So, yeah. Ooh, ooh, too much. <laughs> Way too much. A little bit. <laughs> yeah, I can see the bit. Get off. Go on my bed. So that was not the easiest thing to wash out. I'll be the first to admit. <laughs> Hopefully that awkwardness is going to pay off in gold. Leprechaun booty. Well, it certainly caught all the very fine gold. Look at that. And that mat is not 100% clean yet. That's what we got out of the sluice. And this is what we got out of the V-mat. So most of the chunky gold was caught in the sluice. Most of the fine gold was caught in the V-mat. And I was pushing it all through at the end. I was scraping the mat, unlike at the start. But as usual, we are on a tight time schedule because there is a massive thunderstorm coming our way. So we have to get out of here because this creek floods hard and I do not want to become a boat. Right before we weigh out the gold, I want to know if you're serious about safety. Pick up your own sweet safety squint t-shirt today. The link is in the description below. This is all the gold we collected with the McMatting system next to a Clash Guitars pick. And let me tell you, once I got that mat home and scrubbed it, I found a lot of fine gold. But it's time to get this on the scales. I am pretty sure that even Scarface would be happy with that line of booger sugar. So we're going to weigh it up. I'm thinking it's close to or over a gram. Let's go for the pessimistic viewpoint. 951. Oh, we are climbing. Oh, can we do it? 1.032, that is a stonking amount of gold. 1.032 grams of gold is worth $74.70 Australian at the time of recording, which is a pretty good take for just a couple of hours work. I only shoveled in and around 60 shovels worth of dirt. And then I almost got hit by lightning and the thunderstorm on the way out. The point is a little bit of research and legwork, there are still really good deposits of gold out there. You just have to go sniff them out. That has brought us to the end of the show. I hope you did enjoy my short little gold prospecting film. And until next time, Please give your dog a scratch behind the ears for me, your cat a scratch underneath its chin, and your goldfish a little tickle on its tail. Peace, and I'm out.